Hello everyone, and welcome back again to Whiskey Wednesday. Today, we are talking about writer's tears. I'm really gonna have to work on my uh, bringing bottle into shot action. This is quite an unusual product. Um, well, it's unusual in one quite particular sense. Um, outside of that, it is a triple distilled Irish whiskey from Copper Pop Stills, produced by the Walsh Distillery in Carlo in the Republic of Ireland. Um, the thing I find quite interesting about this product is that it's relatively new in the grand scheme of things, um, but it doesn't declare anywhere on it what type of Irish whiskey it is. It doesn't say if it's a blend, it doesn't say if it's a malt, it doesn't say if it's a pot still whiskey. Upon some further uh, research, this product roughly, I believe, contains 60% malt whiskey and 40% single pot still whiskey. Um, Malt whiskey, which has been triple distilled because it's Irish. Uh, there's always an exception to the rule, but in this case, there isn't. Uh, so it's triple distilled uh, single malt whiskey. So it's just been distilled from malted barley at one distillery. Um, and then it also contains single pot still whiskey, which is a combination of malted and unmalted barley, triple distilled again um, at one single distillery. Who they've sourced that from, we don't know. Some of the product could indeed be their own. But again, there's no real statement of this on the bottle. Um, I wouldn't particularly care if a distillery sources stock from another distillery. Like, it shouldn't really matter. It should just be the quality that goes in, which is the most important thing. But I can also understand not wanting to advertise another company on the back of your bottle. So I'm kind of in the middle with that. Anyway, though, um, when combining single malt whiskey and single pot still whiskey together, you don't really get a style. Um, and from the percentages we've been given, 60% malt, 40% single pot still, I wouldn't call it a single malt whiskey, even though it's over 50% of the content is single malt. But technically, would it define the pot still definition? Because they've created a pot still whiskey, which is just malted and unmalted barley, and then they've added more single malt to it. Um, I think within the legal definition of what a pot still whiskey can be, it has to be at least 30% unmalted grain, in this case barley. Throwing a lot of numbers at you here, do apologise. But nonetheless, on the front of the label it just calls itself an Irish whiskey, which I think is perfectly fair. But there seems to be a lot of work got into the back of it. I think it would be nice if they demonstrated that. Um, on the back there is a small sort of nod to it with just the use of these little icons of malted and unmalted barley. But, hey ho. This company is also known to produce a whiskey called Irishman, or The Irishman. Uh, tend to be higher alcohol, higher proof. Uh, some of them are age dated, some of them are like cash strength releases, which have gotten like a lot of praise and a lot of awards. I am still yet to try one, so I'm not gonna judge anything based on that. Um, this product itself is roughly like 32 pounds in the UK, 40% alcohol. One would assume it's not natural color, just based on that. Uh, and one would also assume that it's chill filtered, but at 30-ish pounds a bottle, call it mid 30s, low to mid 30s, you're in some pretty stiff competition there when it comes to Irish whiskey. Obviously there's the famous brand of Jameson's, which is a lot more affordable, about 10 pounds, sometimes even more. Bushmills 10 kind of fits into the same profile. That's just a single malt whiskey. Things like Rowan Co. Um, what other amazing, like, affordable sort of blended whiskies are kicking around these days? There's too many to remember. There's, there's so many of there's so many of them. Um, but it's in pretty stiff competition, and I'd never purchased it before. So bought one, opened it, I drank some of it neat, I've made some cocktails and stuff with it, and it's it's been pretty good all around. But let's smell it, let's taste it, let's have a little bit of an assessment of what exactly this whiskey smells like and tastes like. A part of me, and in fact I'm going to, I was going to say a part of me always wants to jump to the idea, excuse me, that Irish whiskey is so refreshing and clean, and I, I don't mind saying that because I think it's true in most cases, and indeed it is certainly with this. The nose is just full of like green apple and apricot. There's some more exotic notes in there, like there's a there's a tiny pineapple thing. A little bit of coconut. It 
even the scent of like um, like linen and like like fresh bedding. I know that sounds unusual, but when you've like changed the bed sheets in the room, your room just smells amazing and clean and fresh. It, it does have that to it. There's some nice peachy notes too. Overall, very fruity, very attractive, alluring. I think I've already used the word, but quintessentially Irish. Just fruit driven, really mellow, very welcoming. Uh, no smoke, no spice. A very well put together nose. I think it'd be quite difficult for any whiskey fan to smell that and not feel like, ooh, you know, that's nice. There's some typical stuff in there as well, like vanilla and a bit of toffee and some slight caramel smells. But overall, fruit driven and delicious. Even like a kind of um, citrus thing that kind of crosses over into slightly herby, like le uh, lemon and basil. Right, let's taste it. It's so nice. It's just lovely. Like there's, I will say straight away that there is nothing challenging about this whiskey. This is not a whiskey which is gonna blow your mind with flavor and depth and <clears throat> unexpected twists and turns. It's just a really well-made, affordable Irish whiskey. Like genuinely just delicious. Slight twist from the nose. The initial arrival is actually a tiny bit wood driven. You get an initial bit of spice, oak, oak spice, like toastiness, gently warming. That's followed by a really nice honey note, like soft warm honey that continues to the finish as well. Flavor wise, the palate doesn't do a lot it does continue with this kind of creamy, vanilla, malted barley. Some of the fruit notes are in there. There's like a, a faint kind of idea of apple and pear and stuff like that. Um, but very uncomplicated. What I will say, given a review we did a couple of weeks ago, if you put this next to Monkey Shoulder, Monkey Shoulder tends to be a little bit cheaper, but I would spend the extra money on this again in an absolute heartbeat. It does a lot more, it's much more direct. There is a slight element of youth with it. You know, if, if I was to put all the flavor notes for this as like a graph, like a plot, like a plot diagram. Um, the the largest spike on that plot <clears throat> would be that slight agave-ness you get from Younger Spirit. Um, it's not a bad thing, it will always be there. Barrels are mystical things and age whiskey at different times, like, you know, different... You can cut two barrels from the same tree, put the same spirit in them, put them next to each other in the same distillery, and they will create different tasting products. So. The spike in this could have been a couple of barrels within the batch, which probably have been reused a couple of times, but the, 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 you just get this little hint of like youth and agave, just as it gets to set the back of your mouth. But again, that's followed up with these wonderful kind of honeyed, soft, really welcoming tones. Um, I think it's lovely, and it'll probably be something which becomes a, a very standard house whiskey. Like I've not gone through much of it. Um, I love this bottle too. It's like so tall and noticeable and uh, the cutouts in the front of it with like the little the little tear um, I do find that a bit frustrating because it has actually cut through the text <laughs> like I feel like the tear would be 
kind of welcoming like the corner because they've managed to put like W and T in the corner there, which is quite cool for writer's tears. Um, yeah, I would actually like to read that bit of text, but I can live without it. Overall though, delicious whiskey, very affordable, nice neat. Uh, I, it makes a really nice whiskey sour. It makes a pretty normal old fashioned, like if you wanted like a really, really kind of fruit driven old fashioned, it's pretty good for that as well. But overall, I'm gonna give it a seven. It's something which if you're constricting your whiskey budget a little bit and you really like Irish whiskey, I think you'll fall in love with this in all of the right ways. Um, I'll try and get hold of some Irish women stock as well to film with that too. But anyway, yes, thank you all for watching. Uh, this is Whiskey Wednesday. This has been Writer's Tears, and I will see you all next week.